Christmases spent on the front line of this lunatic war, which as Tarek said, they are now desperate to conclude and will conclude on exactly the terms on which they could have concluded it ten long bloody years ago. Trillions of dollars ago. Thousands of lives ago. Just as we predicted. And of course, events unexpected, at least in their timing, have now burst forth onto the political agenda, onto the political horizon, some of which, as has been said by my friends, pose us difficulties, difficulties which we have surmounted easily in a way which I am also very proud of. You see, it's easy to be in favor of a revolution which overthrows Hosni Mubarak, who in their right mind, I mean even the America, even Hillary, Barack, the Peace Prize winner, even they're claiming they were in favor of the revolution against Hosni Mubarak. They think we don't have Sky Plus. They think we don't have the ability to work the internet and to read what they were saying almost until the hour that the dictator fell. But it's much more difficult when the drums are beating and the tinny bugle of patriotism is sounding, when the demonization of the foe crescendos, when Mr. Ben was speaking in Trafalgar Square in 1956 against the British invasion of Egypt. Anthony Eden, the British Prime Minister, was speaking in the House of Commons and I quote directly, he asked, who will rid us of the mad dog of Cairo? The mad dog of Cairo was Jamal Abdel Nasser, one of the greatest men of the 20th century, and there's been a whole parade of mad dogs ever since. Some of them admittedly madder and more canine than General NASA. But when the propaganda pumps, the grotesque, no doubt, figure and regime of Muammar al-Gaddafi and invites us to support our own country becoming an empire again. It took wisdom and courage for all of us to say no. And we must have that same wisdom and courage in the challenges that lie ahead. Those of us who have been across this course can smell what's in the air about Syria. We've been here before. We know that this is the softening up period where the dictator is built up, portrayed as some kind of new Hitler, as they all seem to be. And then the question is, well, what are we going to do about the near civil war which now exists in Syria? I'll tell you what we have to do. We have to condemn the Syrian regime's brutality against those genuine seekers of freedom and liberty in Syria, but we have to condemn and refuse any idea that the way to solve this crisis is for the imperialist countries of America and Britain and France to intervene in the internal affairs of Syria. The BBC, the BBC, the Bush and Blair Corporation, breathlessly, breathlessly informed us yesterday that the Syrian regime was using Apache helicopters, helicopter gunships against 
against its own people. I've always been puzzled by this one, Chris. Why it's inherently worse to use attack helicopters against your own people than it is to use Apache helicopters against other people's people. I've never quite understood why one is worse than the other. But the same BBC, which could hardly contain its contempt and hatred for the Syrian regime's use of its attack helicopters, was positively cheerleading British Apache helicopters bringing death and destruction to the people of Libya just a week or ten days ago. The hypocrisy of these people knows absolutely no bounds. But we have to be clear. The Syrian regime is a dictatorship, no doubt. But it's not the same kind of dictatorship as Mubarak and the others. The reason that Israel and America and France and Britain are desperate to bring down the regime in Damascus is not because of their record on civil liberties. If it was, we'd be up in arms about our best friends, Saudi Arabia and many other dictatorships in the same region. No, it's not for that reason at all. It's not because Syria is a dictatorship that we hate it so. It's because the Syrian regime continues to harbor and support the leadership of the Palestinian resistance in Damascus. That the Syrian regime continues to insist on the return of its territory stolen by Israel in 1967 and refuses to sign a surrender peace with Israel like the other Arab frontline states. It's because the Syrian regime supports the Lebanese national resistance that we all marched in support of when Israel attacked it in Lebanon in 2006. It's because the Syrian regime refused to allow its country to become an armed camp for imperialism to invade and occupy Iraq. So it's not for the bad things about Bashar that they are hoping to bring the regime down and bad things there are and have gotten worse over these last few months. It's because the Syrian regime is not a slave. You see, we don't mind dictatorships as long as those dictatorships follow the orders of the imperialist countries. So we are clear here in the leadership of Stop the War. I'm sure these young leaders that are coming through are equally clear and you as our key supporters and organizers clear also. I came here with just one announcement to make or one plea for an announcement to make. It's one of the downsides of being the last speaker that it's already been announced. I speak as the one who got scolded by Lindsay for being the first person to predict that we were going to have a million people on our demonstration on February 15, 2003. I, I say to the authorities again, we are fed up marching from A to B. Now we are going to occupy public space in London until these wars are at an end. Thank you very much.